Good morning and welcome to our virtual online worship at Trinity United Church of Christ in Canton, Ohio for Sunday, the 10th of January, 2021. It feels good to say the words 2021, doesn't it? I hope you are all enjoying the start of this new year. And since Stark County has remained red for the COVID spread level, we are having a worship service in person in this beautiful space in our wonderful sanctuary with all the COVID protocols in place for up to 70 people. And we are offering this worship service online for those who are uncomfortable coming inside. However you are worshiping with us this morning, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad you have joined us for worship today. Would you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious Lord, still the beating of our hearts and the racing of our minds. Help us to focus on you this morning. Help us to turn our hearts, our souls, our minds to the spirit of worship. May all that we do in this time be pleasing in your sight. We pray all these things in the powerful, precious, and holy name of Christ Jesus. Amen. For our call to worship this morning, we are reminded that we are known, we are claimed, we are loved, and we are named by our Lord God. Lord God, as we come into this space of worship, we give you thanks that we are known down to every hair on our head by you, our God. Lord God, this morning as we come into the spirit of worship, we give thanks that we are claimed as yours, as your own people. Lord God, as we come into the spirit of worship this morning, we give thanks that we are loved by you despite our flaws, our faults, our sins, all the things that we do 
that take us away from you. You love us just the same. Lord God, as we come into the house of worship, as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, this morning we give thanks that we are named as beloved child by you. For all these things, we give you our thanks and we ask for your blessing this morning. Amen. Early one morning, Daniel and Matthew's mother called to them, Boys, please get up. Something very special is happening today. Can't we just sleep a little longer, asked Daniel, yawning. Matthew noticed that his mother was already dressed. What is happening today, he asked. John the Baptist is baptizing people in the River Jordan. She said, let's hurry so we can go see him. As the sleepy boys rolled up their sleeping mat, they asked, who is John the Baptist? John the Baptist is one of God's servants, said their mother. He baptizes us to wash away our sins. Excited about the journey, the boys ate a breakfast of bread and dates, strapped on their sandals, and were ready to go. Matthew and Daniel held their mother's hands as they walked to the River Jordan. The road was busier than usual, as hundreds of people walked in the same direction. Everyone was in a hurry. Look, said Matthew, I see the baker from the market, and over there is the woman who sells baskets. Do you see that man up ahead? asked Daniel. He's riding a camel with two humps. He must have come from far away, said their mother. The crowd grew as it approached the River Jordan. Many people were gathering along the river's edge. The boys and their mother drew close to the shore, but the boys could not see anything. Matthew and Daniel tried to peer between people's legs. They craned their necks and squinted their eyes. Despite their efforts, they could only get a glimpse of the feet of the man speaking to everyone. Finally, with their mother's permission, they crawled to the front of the crowd for a better view. Facing the people was a strong man dressed in simple clothes. The man smiled at Daniel and Matthew. As the two boys sat on the ground, Daniel looked at the man's plain robe and twine belt. He whispered to his brother, Is that John the Baptist? I think so, answered Matthew. Just then the baker stepped forward. John the Baptist led him into the river until the water was waist high. As John the Baptist gently pushed the baker's head under the water, he said, In the name of God, I baptize you. Then the baker came out of the water, wet but smiling. Yes, that must be John the Baptist, said Matthew to his brother. He does not need to wear fine clothes to be important. A stranger waded into the water. He stopped in front of John the Baptist. John the Baptist fell to his knees and bowed his head. The stranger put his hand on John the Baptist's shoulder. Then the boys recognized the stranger. It is Jesus, they shouted. Jesus smiled at the boys. John the Baptist must be important if Jesus is his friend, whispered Daniel. The crowd grew quiet as everyone listened to Jesus. John, said Jesus, I would like you to baptize me. But Jesus, said John the Baptist, with his head still bowed low, I am not worthy of such a task. You are the one who should baptize me. God chose you, said Jesus. He thinks you are very special. Understanding God's will, John the Baptist humbly put his hand on Jesus' head and said, In the name of God, I baptize you. Then he gently pushed Jesus' head into the river. At once, a ray of sun broke through the clouds, and a warm wind blew. Dripping wet, Jesus emerged from the water and said, Thank you, John. I am happy to do God's will, said John the Baptist. A beautiful white bird landed on Jesus' shoulder. Jesus smiled at the boys again and said, God sent this dove because he is very pleased that I have been baptized. He loves me just the way he loves you. The crowd started to move into the water toward John the Baptist. Come with me, boys, said Daniel and Matthew's mother. The time has come for us to be baptized. Smiling, Daniel and Matthew took their mother's hands 
and walked with her into the river. Thank you guys for listening to the story of John the Baptist with us today. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. See ya. Would you hear with me now these words from our holy scriptures? This morning's text is the story of the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan by his cousin John, John the Baptist or John the Baptizer. It comes from the first chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, verses 4 through 11. Hear with me now these words. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, my beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the spirit of prayer. Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Fifth grade was a rough year for me. It was the year that I learned many names that the other kids in my class had for me, and they were not kind. Our teacher set up the classroom in pods of four. Four desks arranged in a little group throughout the classroom. The four students would face each other to promote teamwork, group projects, and a high level of interaction between the group members of the pod. It was a great idea in theory, but it turned into a nightmare for me. During group work, the other three kids in my pod would take turns making fun of me, each one trying to outdo the other with name-calling and insults. At 10 years old, I had the great misfortune to have frequent sinus infections and a nasal-sounding voice often with phlegm in my throat. Snot eater, one of the kids taunted. I was also not very athletic, and my mother brought me her version of cool clothes that I wore to school. And trust me, they were not considered cool by any of those other kids. Mama's boy, they called me. My nose grew faster than the rest of my body and protruded from my face. Big nose, they chanted. Then, around Christmas time, it became Rudolph. Fifth grade was a rough year for me. But I did not have the worst of it. Pete had a speech impediment, and we all called him st Stuttering Pete. Megan was overweight, and we all called her a Moogan, making sure to moo like a cow every time she walked into the lunchroom. And she just sat there 
red-faced and silent through our taunts. And then there was Billy. Billy's family didn't have a lot of money, and so he came to school every day dressed in the same camouflage outfit. He didn't bathe all that regularly, and we called him Smelly Billy. Now, he retorted with plenty of nasty words himself and a few fists. But when he thought no one was looking, he would sit in the corner of the playground with small tears rolling down his cheeks in silence. That old childhood rhyme, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me, is a big, fat lie. Names have the power to hurt, and to hurt a lot. Names have the power to wound, insult, and damage a person's self-worth or self-image. These names have power. These names can label us and make us fear terrible. Names can cause great injury and make us internalize the negative ways that others see us, and this can have lasting effects. <laughs> but the good news today, the good news from today's scripture is that God, God has another name for us, beloved child. And God calls us by that name each and every day. Through our baptism, God knows us individually and personally. Through our baptism, God claims us as God's own. Through our baptism, God reminds us that we are loved now and forever. And we in the UCC Church, affirm all of these things at our confirmation. We affirm our baptism. We affirm our place in the realm of the family of God at our confirmation. Through our baptism and confirmation, God names us as beloved child, a name which I believe counteracts all the other insults, negative names, name-calling taunts, it counteracts all of the things we have been called in our lives because I'm sure that as you're sitting here in the pews, as you're watching wherever you may be, you too probably have been called some unkind names in your life. Beloved child supersedes all other names that we have been called or will be called in the future. This is the name that God has for us, and this is our most important name of all. Kids can be cruel, as I found out in fifth grade. But as adults, we learn other names to call people that can hurt even more, that can be even more cruel. We see people and learn to call them by racial slurs, using cruel words to define anyone who is different from us. We use words to label and tear down people based on gender, race, sexual orientation, religion, immigration status, economic status. We look at people who have been arrested and label them as criminal for the rest of their lives despite the fact that Jesus forgave criminals throughout his ministry. We look at our Muslim brothers and sisters and name them as terrorists. The list can go on and on and on. But I believe these names and this name calling is just a part of the brokenness of our world. And we have the power to heal that brokenness by using different names. Names that lift others up, that help them to see themselves as God sees them and all of us. When we turn to the Bible for our lesson today, we see Jesus in the Jordan River, and he is baptized. We read this passage to find answers from God, 
what is this sacrament of baptism and confirmation all about? In the scriptures, we see Jesus. Jesus, the one we call Savior. Jesus, the one we praise. Jesus, the one we know, healed the untouchables and fed 5,000. We see Jesus before all of these miracles at his baptism. The Jordan River is a powerful symbol throughout the Bible. It's often portrayed as the bridge between the broken and the redeemed, the lost and the found between the ordinary and the extraordinary. The Israelites had to cross the River Jordan to reach the Promised Land. Elijah had to cross the River Jordan before ascending to heaven. And in our scripture today, we see Jesus seeking baptism in the Jordan River. But what was this baptism all about? What does this mean? Christians and theologians and seekers and preachers have often questioned Jesus' baptism. Some people understand baptism as a sacrament of washing away our sins. And yet we see Jesus, the perfect person, God incarnate, the one without sin, being baptized. This leads us to wonder. Because we know that Jesus had no sins to wash away. So believers and Christians for generations have wondered why Jesus was baptized. I believe one of the reasons, the thing that is so important is that in that moment, Jesus was known, was claimed, was loved, and was named by God and commissioned to do ministry. And this scripture is from the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark and starts with the fourth verse. This is the very beginning of Mark's Gospel. Launching us into the ministry of Jesus and proclaiming the good news with his baptism. Now, we just came through the Christmas season looking at Luke's Gospel. Talked a little bit about Matthew. All of that wonderful, beautiful story of the birth narrative. But in Mark, we don't have any of that. We have no birth narrative, and we also have no mystical pronouncement of the word being made flesh like the Gospel of John begins with, as we heard last week. We don't have any of that in Mark. Because Mark wrote the Gospel for one reason, for one purpose, to tell the good news of Jesus and proclaim his ministry to the world. So that's where Mark begins. He throws us immediately into the Jordan River with Jesus at his baptism. His baptism is a naming rite and a commissioning of his ministry on earth. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is baptized in the third chapter. And if you read Matthew's Gospel carefully, you see that according to Matthew, he had never spoken a word until that moment. We have never heard one gospel truth or one encouraging word from Jesus in Matthew's gospel until this passage. We have never seen Jesus' ministry or good works. Jesus has not started teaching or preaching or healing or saving anyone up to this point. Before his baptism, Jesus probably lived an ordinary life in Galilee. We really have no idea minus a couple of brief passages about what Jesus was doing or wasn't doing in his childhood, adolescence, and even in his 20s. But then, the Gospel of Matthew says that Jesus traveled from Galilee to the Jordan River on the same day that crowds were gathering to be baptized by John at the banks of the Jordan. So what is this sacrament of baptism all about? When we turn to the Gospels, this is what we know about Jesus' baptism day. Jesus came to the banks of the River Jordan to be commissioned as God's servant, to put hierarchies on their heads, and to fully submerge into this broken world where all of God's people live. And more than this, and more 
than this. Jesus, Jesus' identity was affirmed through his baptism. Jesus was named as beloved at his baptism. Jesus' ministry began right after his baptism. On that beautiful day, Jesus slipped under the surface of the Jordan, and with that, Jesus began the work of comforting and healing all of us through full immersion into our shattered world and broken lives. He began walking with us through our faults, through our failures, through our pains and problems, when he emerged and walked out of the waters of the Jordan. By wading into those waters, Jesus took his place beside us and among us. Jesus openly and decisively declares that he stands shoulder to shoulder with all of us in our brokenness. Jesus' mission and ministry began at his baptism. So what is the sacrament of baptism all about? I believe that through baptism and confirmation, we all figure out who we are because we are named as beloved children by God. The gift of identity has to come before we fulfill our mission and ministry in the world. Even Jesus, perfect and whole and without sin, was baptized to affirm that he was called to this great ministry. Jesus himself was commissioned through his baptism. But here's the best news about today's scripture and Jesus' baptism. On that day, when Jesus was raised up from the River Jordan, the heavens were opened, and God declared, You are my beloved child, in whom I am well pleased. This is a very personal moment when God reaches out into the world and proves that God is not so far away from us. We need to be reminded of that lesson today, too. That through the sacraments of baptism and confirmation, God reminds us that God is close at hand and involved in our lives. Ten days into the new year, we have crossed yet another milestone in the pandemic. Over 350,000 Americans have died in the past nine months from COVID. Food lines stretch farther and farther all across the nation as more and more people than ever in our history since the Great Depression are facing food insecurity. God can seem very far away indeed in times like these. But let's remember that just a couple weeks ago, we celebrated the birth of the Prince of Peace and his coming into the world that changed everything. God is close at hand, but it's so easy to forget and to have it feel like God is far away when we read the news cycles and the media and hear what's going on. Sometimes we need to turn it off and remember to pray. And remember that at our baptism, at our confirmation, God has known us, God has claimed us, God has loved us, and God has named us as beloved. So when we ask this question, what is the sacrament of baptism all about? What is the sacrament of confirmation all about? Let us know this. Trinity, baptism is a sacrament of naming. Baptism is that powerful moment when we are all affirmed in our identity as beloved children of God. Baptism is a reminder that God is right here, close at hand, with each and every one of us. Baptism is the promise that we are claimed as God's own people. That no matter where we go, God will be with us. 
that no matter what we do, God is with us and for us and will not abandon us. In baptism, we are blessed with the promise of God's Spirit, and even in our shattered pieces, our broken places, we are held in the loving embrace of God, our protector and nurturer. This is what God is saying to each of us through this gospel scripture today. To everyone who is watching this, who has been on their knees, unable to rise, broken, down, depressed, sad, feeling that nothing is working, that life is too hard, remember your baptism. Remember those healing, nourishing, thirst-quenching waters. And hear God's almighty voice saying to you, You are my beloved child, and with you I am well pleased. Amen. Would you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for everything that we have in our lives, for all the blessings, for all the things that we take for granted. Help us now in this moment, to take a breath, pause, and give thanks. To reflect upon all of the things that we have to be thankful for as this new year of 2021 dawns. Lord God, you have seen fit to take us through this last many months of tumultuous time. May we start our path of healing and reconciliation this year through your grace, through your love. We say thank you. Amen. Please join me now in saying the prayer that Jesus taught all of his followers as we say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we start this new year, we continue to ask for your support. If you haven't turned your pledge cards in for what you will do to support the church this year, please do so. If you are giving without pledge cards, that is fine too. Please make sure that you give to support this church so that we may continue to provide ministry, to do mission work, to be the people of God right here in Canton, Ohio, as we celebrate our 150th year of existence at Trinity UCC. We've got so much to look forward to. We're so glad to have you here with us in whatever way you can. We give thanks for you. Please now give generously and click the link on this video. You can drop your gifts off at the secure lockbox outside of door one. You can mail them in anytime. We encourage you to give in whatever way you can to the best of your ability. Thank you for your support.
the Lord bless you and keep you. May you go throughout this week secure in the knowledge that you are known by our God. You are named as beloved by our God. You are acclaimed as God's own children by our God. And you are loved by our God no matter what. There's nothing you can do about it. Amen. <laughs>